Um, okay, so now well, we have a handle on where you're starting from and what your scope might be. What would be the next steps? Yeah, good. Um, so next step is uh, really starting to understand the requirements, really deeply understand mm -hmm. the requirements. Because you could imagine that you read something quickly, and it's highly technical. Mm -hmm. And if you read through the NIST requirements, they're all one sentence long. They're really brief little statements. They don't explain themselves. Yep. They don't clarify. <laughs> they don't give examples. They mm -hmm. don't give webinars like today. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. um, you get 110 sentences, and you're, you have to determine what does it mean? What does it mean for us? What do we need to do? For each of the 110. Um, you could imagine if you misunderstand something and you do the wrong thing, but you check it off and say, we got that done. Fast forward to when an assessor is in your building assessing your system mm -hmm. and they say, you missed this. And you'll say, no, we didn't. You see right there. And they'll say, yeah, but that's not what it means. Hmm. What a shame that would be. And the cost could be could be huge because that may mean a new a reassessment. Yeah. So up front, again, getting started, uh, really taking the time to learn mm -hmm. uh, those details. And so one way to look at that is that the 110 requirements are organized into what are called 14 families. Think of it as 14 topics. I think we have a slide we can put up on that. Um, and those families kind of organize themselves, if you, mm -hmm. if you read through them carefully, into what are called technical controls, technical things that are going to require technology, often require your IT person or your third party MSP, managed service provider, somebody with the technical competency to deal with those things. And they're going to mean you know, dealing with software and hardware and networking and equipment and things like that. Um, about 60% of the 110 mm -hmm. are um, in that, that, uh, that domain of being technical. The rest of them, I've, we've, we've kind of labeled them organizational controls. Those are things that aren't necessarily technical, like training as an example, uh, securing your building, your facility, from visitors just wandering in and out of the building. You can't, can't that's a requirement. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need the IT person to go make sure the locks on the doors are working. Um, or as I saw it when client I visited, they had an IT closet where they kept everything, uh -huh. but there was no lock on the door. So anybody could walk in. <laughs> okay, simple thing, get the lock replaced. Mm -hmm. Again, not technical. Yep. Um, some of these are could be driven by management. Maybe they're delegated to HR or quality assurance to deal with, mm -hmm. who could kind of lead that project. But anyway, being familiar with the nature of these these requirements and what they all you know mean and that type of thing is really important. Thank you for watching this video to the end. This is part of a longer series on DFARS, NIST, and CMMC compliance produced by Core Business Solutions. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video with a thumbs up, and click the bell to get notified when we drop a new video. Also, we'd appreciate it if you would share this video with your colleagues who need to stay up to speed on DFARS, NIST, and CMMC. Thank you, and we'll see you again in the next video.